you might have just bought the quest for $42 billion since the price increase and come to the realization that games cost money too. Oh no, God! But if so, this is the place for you because I've been digging to find the best free quest games that you've never heard of. So let's get to it. First off, most of these games are from SideQuest because it's so easy to install, it's essentially part of the main library now. The first game on Santa's list is Tea for God. You might have heard of this game a while back, but it's since had regular updates. The first time I played this game, my mind was blown. It uses your play space as the map design, so it essentially generates the play space around your play space. I have no idea how this works, but see by this clip, the map is being generated as I walk around corners. The first few minutes of gameplay I was super hesitant walking around, as I'd rather not go full steam ahead into my wall. <laughs> oh. Wouldn't be my first time. As long as your guardian is set correctly, and you pick the right settings, you'll have a great experience. The game now has a slight story where you seek revenge on the gods of this world. You have guns and you come across robot enemies that you have to fight your way through. If you're looking for what is essentially an endless arcade game with creepy dystopian vibes, it's definitely worth it. Tea for God is available on both SideQuest and AppLab. Now, this next game is basically me living out my childhood fantasy, and that's a Spider-Man game. <laughs> the game might not be graphically amazing, but once you get the swing of it, you'll see how incredibly fun it is. I spent way too long on this game, just basically trying to be Spider-Man. The web mechanics are actually really good. Your webs are physically present, so they hang around, and also you can pull off some really funky moves, or just swing around the blocky city. You can climb walls, go really high, and fast. There isn't much more to this game, but it's incredibly fun. Really makes me want a good Spider-Man game to come out. If the physics are right, it could be mind-blowing. This game is called Silkworm, and it's also available on SideQuest and AppLab. Now on to what I think is the most magical experience you can have on Quest. I'm ashamed at myself that I didn't know about this sooner. This game is the product of a true Harry Potter fan, just creating something truly special. No intention to sell, but just to let people bask in the glory of this magical experience. You get to explore Hogwarts Castle like never before, inside and out. The level of detail to this world is incredible, and you really get a sense of scale and magical nature of the level design. From catching the golden snitch in the Quidditch arena, to sneaking up to the Whomping Willow in the castle grounds. This Harry Potter experience is like no other, and is definitely worth a download. The experience is called Seeker, and is available on SideQuest. Now this game plays into everyone's fears. I've not seen a game quite like this, and was blown away by the existential dread of the mighty digital seas. The game is relatively simple, it's an endless sail down the treacherous frozen seas. Your only objective is to last as long as possible before the deep blue swallows you whole. It's super intense and is another game that utilizes play space incredibly well. The game will have you in states of panic to minimize damage from the absolute monstrosity sized waves. Any damage to your ship and you'll have to repair it yourself. Make sure your guardian is set correctly though, otherwise like me you'll end up having to open your fridge just to get the hammer. The sounds of this game and the choppy seas make it a terrifying experience. My warning is though, if you do get motion sickness, this game will test your sea legs. The game is called High Seas and is available on SideQuest. Next we have an incredibly unique title called We Are One. The title basically says it all. It's a time loop game where you must complete objectives by creating time loops of yourself. You get 30 seconds per loop. That might include passing ammo or a gun to another one of your time loops. The gameplay is super simple, but it gets harder and more complex as you play. Graphically, this game is beautiful. We don't see enough cell shaded art styles hanging around on the quest. The potential of time loops have only just scratched the surface in VR. The way you can see yourself in previous loops works really well, and I'm looking forward to what this game has in the future. We Are One is currently a demo, so I'm assuming there's a full release coming soon. As for now, it's available on SideQuest. Back to the Magical Kingdom. We have a game that is quite specifically designed for hand tracking. This is what I call an introductory game. The type of experience you want to introduce VR to your friends and family. I remember back in the HTC Vive days, when my first experience was Waltz of the Wizard. This title gives me those same vibes, but with the added addition 
of top-notch hand tracking, which is no surprise consider this game is made by Facebook Reality Labs. The recent hand tracking update makes this a joy to play and really sets an example for how hand tracking should be done. The game is short but offers quite a unique experience that's definitely worth a try, especially when your hands are turned into tentacles. It really freaked me out. The game is called Elixir and is available on the Oculus Store library. The next game is, well, whatever game you want. That's because I'm giving away two games of your choice to celebrate 1k subs. Woo! All you have to do is like and comment what game you've had your eye on, and I'll pick two of you at random. Also, the game showing in the background is Slap Simulator, where you essentially get to slap Zuckerberg for rising those prices. Available on SideQuest. If you like this video, then you'll probably like these. If you did, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.